Well, how many are looking forward to going to the promised land? I think you can do better than that. How many are looking forward to going to the promised land? Yeah. Amen. Well, I hope you are. We're glad you're here. And uh, we like to think that this is a little bit of, of the uh, earth side of the promised land here at our church. And uh, if you're visiting with us, thank you uh, for being here. I've met several of you already, and we're just uh, very, very thankful that you chose New Life Church today to be a part of your weekend. And if you are visiting with us, we'd love to have a record of your visit. So our ushers are going to make their way to the back. Would you lift your hand if you're visiting? They've got a, a card and a brochure and a pen to give to you. Fill the card out. Drop it in the offering plate when it comes by in just a few moments. And again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about what God has in store for New Life Church in 2016. And uh, I'm excited about what God's going to do in this service. Didn't the choir do a good job? And I do love that song. Now I'm looking forward to hearing you sing. So let's stand together. Brother Bruce is going to come lead us in worship. We serve a mighty God. Mighty is our God. We want to sing about his goodness, his grace this morning. Join with us.
God's on the throne this morning, say amen. Amen. We're going to ask that you turn around, greet those who are beside you, take a time to fellowship. Choir's going to make its way down. So glad you're in church today. Sing this chorus together, will you? people said amen. amen well he is worthy of lifting up amen and uh, thank you again for being here this is uh, not just a time we have to dread when we give it's a time of worship the greatest gift that you and I have ever been given is Jesus Christ if you believe that say amen and uh, it showed me that of uh, everyone that has ever been mentioned in the history of the world then God is the greatest giver and to be like God, we should give. And I pray today that you will give uh, because he's been so good to you. And give out of a heart of love today as we worship together. Let's pray. Brother Gary Foy, lead us in prayer if you would. Amen. You may be seated.
Thank you, Christy. Awesome message in that song. He's all we need because he's the only Savior that we were ever going to have to have. He gave his life on that cross to pay that sin that only he could pay, the debt that he could pay. What a wonderful Savior we love and serve today. Amen. Let's stand and sing together about this wonderful Savior of ours, will you? Who on the earth could match the worth of the sinless Son of God? Bearing our shame, in mercy He came to reveal His heart. said say hallelujah say he's worthy amen will you bow your head and pray with me before the preacher comes and gives the message today father it's so good to be able to sing praises to you today thank you for the awesome power in these words of these songs may we take them as encouragement and strength lord help us now as we listen to your word proclaimed we pray now that you'll be with the pastor even the words that we need to hear from your word today may we apply them to our heart and our life in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, he's worthy. Amen.
Amen. Good to see you. Take your Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Philippians. Thank you for the good worship time. And uh, Again, looking forward to the preaching of God's Word. That is, as it were, the main event. Now, now listen, I love to sing about as good as anybody you've ever met. But the main event at New Life Church is the preaching of God's Word. And I promise you this, it's not because I'm the heavyweight champion either, all right? It's because God's Word is good, it's powerful, it's quick, it's strong, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible says that it pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. He knows our thoughts and is a discerner of those things, and, and I'm just thankful for the Word of God and again, the opportunity today to preach His Word. Philippians chapter 2 is where we will begin reading in just a few moments. I want to talk to you this morning about something that might not have been on your Sunday morning sermon list, your podcast playlist. Maybe something maybe you're not prepared for today, but... I think if you'll listen to me from beginning to end, I think you'll understand the, the high importance of what I'm speaking on. I want to talk to you today about working out. Working out. I mean, I know looking at me, you could tell I'm probably the guy who should be talking about it. Right? With my physical specimen and uh, my, my body mass, um, my supernatural athleticism. I'm thinking, somebody help me. <laughs> um, yeah, it's getting deeper, isn't it? Pull the life raft, yeah, I need that. You know, it seems that in the beginning of a year, uh, people make all kinds of resolutions. We talked about some of that last week. But, uh, you know, if you were to poll the top ten resolutions, I would dare say that four or five of them have to do with a person's physical body. If you were to Google what are the, the, the number one or the top ten resolutions that people make, you would see that 40 to 50% of all the resolutions that people make have to do with their physical health. Whether they say, come January 1st, I'm going to eat right. How many said that? Okay, eight of us. Because that's hard, isn't it? It's hard to, to eat right. I mean, if you in eastern North Carolina, I like my barbecue. Amen? About, that's as good as it's going to get today, by the way, folks. I like barbecue. I like fried chicken. I mean, that's how I knew I was called to preach. I didn't want to get up one morning, and I had a craving for fried chicken. I just knew God had put his call on my life. I, I like hot dogs. I love to eat a hot dog and somebody to come by and say, don't you know what's in that? And I say, yes, and it's good anyway. I like hot dogs. The truth is, if I were to look at my diet, the things that I like are the worst for me. But I, I like it. I grew up and I used to say, if it's, if it's, if it's good for you, it's not good to you. But some of us made a resolution. I'm going to eat better. Because we stepped on the scales and we're like, whoa. Somebody else got a foot on there. We're going to eat right. We're going to exercise. My mom used to have a plaque right on the other side of our kitchen down the hallway in our home. And it, and it said, she got it from one of these country kitchen parties and it said, when I get the feeling to exercise, I lie down till the feeling passes. <laughs> and and uh, that's probably kind of, kind of like where we are maybe. But, but maybe you made a resolution. I'm going to exercise. Christy and I, both, we, we bought some, um, some running shoes. We're not sure what we're going to do with them yet. But uh, we, we did get us some, some running shoes. And uh, we've said, you know what? We need to get in better shape. We're going to exercise. I got a point here, so hang on. Places like Gold's Gym, Planet Fitness, even local places like Quartz Plus. You know what the highest enrollment rate of these fitness places are? January. 
Because everybody says, you know what? I'm going to get in shape. I'm going I'm to a, I'm a take off that, those 15 pounds I gained at Thanksgiving. You know, I'm, I'm going to get in shape. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some things to get feeling better about, about myself. We turn the leaf on a new year, and it seems like we get a little more health conscious. We mention words regularly like running, exercise, dieting, and working out. Now, I am a proponent of taking care of your body, and I don't, I don't think we talk enough about that. Do you know what Corinthians says about your body? It's not your own. It's my body, and I'll buffet it if I want to, right? But your body is not your own. Paul said, you were bought with a price. And may I make mention of this, as I will later on in the sermon, and it was a pretty high price. Pretty high price. You were bought with a price, therefore, the Bible says, glorify God in your body, which is His, in your body and in your spirit. So we should take care of our bodies. We should strive to be healthy. We should strive to, to eat right. We should strive to, to exercise. We've got some friends of ours that have gone 5K crazy. How many would admit that you've heard the, the term 5K more in the last two years than ever in the history of mankind, right? I mean, it just seems like they're everywhere. Every weekend there's a 5K run. First time I heard it, I'm like, I'm not running 5,000 miles for any calls, you know? But then when I heard it was just over three, it made me feel a little bit, a little bit better. These guys are crazy. Uh, Jimmy Moore has been wanting me to, to start cycling with him. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit better on the knees. And, and, and uh, the, when you're getting older, you gotta, you got to think about stuff like that. At least that's what they tell me. And, and so, um, so I asked him one day, I said, well, well Jimmy, what, what are we talking about? I mean, you want to go bike riding. How far are we going to, like, ride down to the end of the street and come back? Because that sounds good to me. Just get me almost where I'm sweating and I'm good. And he said, no. I said, well, how far have you ever ridden on your bike? He said, well, one time I rode about 100 miles. Listen, folks, I don't like driving 100 miles in a car, much less riding 100 miles on a bicycle. But people have gone cycling crazy and, and 5K crazy. They've got running groups and running shoes and running socks and running this and running that. And I'm not downing that because I believe that you should take care of your body. And some of you, this is just a side note, some of you need to do a better job of taking care of your body so that we can keep you around for a while. Amen? Because it's not yours anyway. You're just a steward of your body. That's not my message, but that's good preaching. Who's up for fried chicken for lunch, you know? <laughs> but Paul said it this way in 1 Timothy 4, then we'll get to Philippians. For bodily exercise, profiteth well. Now what Paul was not saying, he was not saying that you do not need to exercise. Paul was not saying that you do not need to take care of your physical body. Paul was not saying that working out is a bad idea. Paul was not saying that you don't need to run. And Paul was not saying that we do not need to watch what we eat. But it's a, it's a verse of comparison. He said, for bodily exercise profit little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Paul was saying this, that in comparison to how spiritually healthy you should be, your physical health fades. It fades. We should be so spiritually healthy. We should work so hard to be spiritually healthy that when we look at our physical health, in comparison to this, it profited little. I'll give you another contrast. When Jesus said, if you will be a follower of me, if you're going to be my disciple, 
If you're going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you have to, now listen, hate your father and your mother. Now let's take a poll. How many of you love your mama and your daddy? Raise your hand. Good. And, and if you looked around and somebody didn't have their hand raised, you need to be worried about those folks. I love my mom and dad. My, my, my son's birthday was, was yesterday. The Micah man was, um, he turned nine years old. Nine. The day before was my dad's birthday. It was also Miss Josephine Dahl's birthday. My, my dad and Miss Joe were born on the same day of the same year. And for the right price, I'll tell you what that year was. <laughs> it goes to the highest bidder. It was a joy for me on multiple occasions on the 8th to call my daddy and to talk to him. I called him twice in the morning. I called him once when I had uh, one of the kids with me. Then on the way home that night from the game, we called him again so they could sing happy birthday to him. Um, my mama's birthday is the 13th. So my mama has a birthday this week on Wednesday. And on Thursday, I'm going to go up and I'm going to take my mama and my daddy out since I won't get to see either one of them on their birthday. I'm going to take them out for a birthday lunch at McDonald's. <laughs> No, we'll probably go to Burger King or somewhere. We, no, we'll go somewhere nicer than that. I love my mom and dad. I mean, with everything that's in me, I love my mom and dad. The truth is, I'm starting to flip the coin now, and I'm starting to treat and to show affection and to love my mom and dad to the level that I want my kids to treat me and show affection for me when they get older. And so they see, when I go home, listen to me, I'm 37, almost 38 years old, listen to me, I still hug and kiss my daddy. And, and you don't think that's manly enough? I'll arm wrestle you. If you beat me, I'll kick you and run, you know? I love my mama. I'm a mama's boy. I don't care. If my mom and dad needed something right now, if I got an emergency phone call during church, I got bad news for you. I'd leave you high and dry and go take care of my mom and daddy. You're supposed to, right? But now I'm in a quandary. Jesus said, if I'm going to be a follower of him, i got to hate my mom and daddy. Surely that can't be what Jesus meant. And if you look at the context literally, it's not literally to hate your mother and father like we would think hating someone. What he's saying is that my love for God, my commitment to the Lord, my dedication to Him, my allegiance to the Savior should be so great that all other love and all other commitment and all other allegiance in comparison to that should so fade that it looks like hate because I'm dedicated and I'm committed and I love Him so much. See the contrast? Paul's making the same contrast. He says, you should be growing. You should be so fit spiritually that even if you are fit physically, in comparison to this, it profiteth nothing. Not to mention it's going to fade. In that verse, he finishes by saying, but godliness is profitable to all things, having the promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. You say, why do you talk about all this? Well, there's an interesting phrase in our passage today that challenges us to work out. You're going to leave here and you're going to say, well, what did the preacher preach on? Working out. But not in a physical sense. And I'm not diminishing that again, but in the spiritual sense, I believe that from our passage, God is calling every one of us to work out. Notice, if you will, in Philippians chapter 2, and we'll come back to the context as we've been preaching through a series here. We'll come back to its context in, in the context in a moment. But beginning in verse 9, the Bible says this. It 
Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, now notice this, wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Did you catch that? Work out work out Tyler the Bible says work out he likes to work out he's been wanting me to work out not with him he's hardcore I'm not work out work out your own salvation with fear and trembling there's four things from this passage I want us to see first of all I want us to see the meaning of what it means to work out spiritually what does it mean the what now, in order to define what it means, we have to first define what it doesn't mean. And I want to be really clear on this. Paul is not saying for us to work for your salvation. I mean, how many understand? You cannot work for your salvation. You understand that? Raise your hand. You cannot work for it. You cannot earn it. You cannot merit it. There's nothing you can do. You come to church, you put a big wad of money in the, the offering plate. By the way, I'm not discouraging that. But it doesn't matter how much money you put in the plate, you're not buying your way to heaven. It doesn't matter how morally good you are. The Bible says we're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says that there's none righteous, no, not one. The best you have and the best I have is as a filthy rag to God. That's the best we've got. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourselves, it's the what? The gift of God, lest any man should boast. If I could earn my way there, if I could purchase my ticket there, when I get to heaven, I would be able to boast at how much I paid or how good I was. But there's nobody in heaven that's going to be able to boast in anything save the cross of Jesus Christ. And so it's not saying to work for your salvation. He's saying work out your own salvation. So what does it mean? Well, if you want to circle the two words work out in the English, it literally means this. To bring to the fullest potential. To bring to the fullest potential. Potential. It was a mining term. It was what miners would say as they were leaving a mine that they had just worked in. And they would look back at that mine that they, that they had gotten all of whatever was in there, whether it was gold or whether it was coal or whatever, they would be able to leave the mine after weeks and weeks and months and months, maybe years and years being in that mine, and they would be able to leave that mine and they, they would be able to say, we got everything there was from that mine. It was a farming term. It was the same thing that a farmer would say after a harvest when they had plowed the ground carefully and they had planted the, the, the seed diligently and they, they, they had waited on, on the rain and, and, and they would be able to bring in the harvest. And it's the same thing that a farmer would say looking at his crops. He would be able to walk away from the field saying, we got everything there was from the land. Everything. I'll bring it home to you like this. I, um, if you don't know this or not, it's because you don't know me very well, but I am cheap. You can call it frugal. 
You can call it be a good steward. You can call it a Ramseyite. I don't care. I'm cheap. I, I wear things till my wife says, Honey, I'm not letting you walk out of the house with that anymore. I had a pair of dress pants. They drug the ground a little bit, and, and it's because I'm short. And, um, and they started getting tattered at the bottom. It was a pair of suit pants. And so I, I, I would walk, and of course you walk outside, they start getting tattered. And, and one day I pulled them up, I pulled them out, and I, I thought, man, there's threads hanging off of them like that. Looked like a pair of ratty jeans. It's supposed to be a suit. And uh, I, uh, I put them on, and my wife said, no. -uh. I said, uh, -uh what? She said, you ain't wearing those out. She said, do you know how ridiculous you look walking on the stage with tattered pants? So I started playing along. I said, how ridiculous. You know, she didn't think it was funny. I'm the same way with shoes. By the way, I've still got dress shirts that I had in, in uh, college. Now they're white shirts with a brown collar. <laughs> it's really a neat fad. Um... Ties, suits. I mean, I, I wear. I'll just wear it till it's just gone. But when it's just not there anymore, I'll just, I'll just stop wearing it. Shoes the same way. I, I will wear a hole in a pair of shoes, and keep wearing them. How many will do that? I, I, my wife. We, we were somewhere. I was preaching a revival somewhere, and she happened to be with me. And, and sometimes, and I encourage you to come to the altar because if you notice, when I'm not preaching, I'm gonna tell you what God always speaks to my heart because His Word is good. And sometimes I get blessed by my own preaching. I ain't going to lie to you. And sometimes I just, sometimes I need to get alone and, and get on an altar somewhere. And so I was preaching somewhere and she was there. And, and, and if I can't get down because there's folks there, I'll just find a place on the stage and I'll just kneel down. And you know the funny thing, when you kneel down, if you're not careful, when you kneel down, the bottoms of your shoes will show. And so we, we just... We had a great service, and uh, afterwards we went out to eat with the pastor, and then on the way home she said, can we talk about something? And, and guys, you know that feeling. That's worse than the principal coming over the intercom, calling your name, saying get to the office. It's like, so you go through the process. What did I do? What didn't I do? You know, all, the, all these things. And I'm thinking, we just met with God. My wife wants to talk about something earth-shattering. I'm like, yes, honey, what would you like to talk about? She goes, we got to talk about your shoes. And that was odd. Because after she said that, I thought, well, that's a new one. <laughs> I mean, we've talked about some ridiculous things, but that's a new one. And I said, okay, so what, what about my shoes? And she says, do you realize that on, eat, on, on the bottoms of your shoes, both of them have two holes apiece, the size of 50-cent pieces? She said, you know how embarrassing that is when you're kneeling at the altar and you're showing everybody your shoes? And I'm thinking to myself, your eyes should be closed. But you need to hear this. There's a difference in thinking it and saying it, right? I've been married long enough. And so she said, we have to retire. You've got to get you a pair of shoes. We have to retire these shoes. And I remember throwing those dudes in the garbage can. I almost had a ceremony for them, you know? Well, I've known you too, Pat and Charlie, for a long time. And, and listen, when I, when I tossed them shoes into the trash can, I could walk away saying, I got everything there was out of that pair of shoes. I was wondering when I walked outside in the rain why my socks always got wet. But I, wasn't, I didn't know. I got everything there was out of that, those shoes. The farmer would walk away and say, I got everything there was to get out of the land. The, the miner would leave and say, we got everything there was out of the mine. Paul's not saying so that you can work to earn your salvation because you can't. It's a gift of God, amen? But once Jesus Christ gives you that gift, the Bible says that God requires of you to get everything you can out of it. To get everything you can out of that salvation to work out your salvation to complete it to carry it to its conclusion and may I say today that God wants us to go through a spiritual workout 
And God requires of you and of me to get everything that we can out of this wonderful salvation that he has given to us. First of all, what does it mean? Secondly, why work out? Why work out? Now that you know what it means, why do it? I mean, when you work out physically, there's reasons. Maybe you're a little overweight. Maybe you got a bad report from the doctor. Maybe your cholesterol's high. Maybe your sugar's too high. Whatever the case may be. Maybe you just don't feel good. Maybe you, your joints are starting to stiff up and you just need to, you need to, you need to get going so you feel, I'm not going to say young again, but younger. And, and there's reasons why you work out physically. Why do we work out spiritually? Well, I'll tell you from our context, verse number 1 through verse number 8 tells me we should work out because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. He's talking to the church and he says, you need to have the same mind that Jesus Christ had. When he went to the cross, I mean, let's read it together, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Listen. The God of the universe humbled himself and took on the form of a servant. He was made in the likeness of man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Oh, church, may we never get over what Jesus did for us on the cross. The price that he paid for you and for me was a high price. Why should I work out physically? Because I need to lose weight. Physically, I want to feel better. Physically, the doctor told me I had to. Why do we work out spiritually? Because Jesus Christ went to a cross to pay for the price for redemption so that you and I could have a way of salvation. What greater reason is there than Jesus Christ on the cross? But I'll give you another reason why. You today should work out your salvation because one day you're going to stand before God. We should work out our salvation because of what he did in redemption, but we should work out our salvation because of who he is. And we should reverence him. Notice verse 9. Wherefore, now, anytime wherefore and therefore are used in the scriptures, you need to go back because it's saying that in light of the context of what I've just said. So in light of what I've just said, in light of talking about Christ, in light of trying to have you unified in your mind, in light of chapter number one, that everything that we do should honor and glorify God, that whether by life or by death, that Christ should be magnified. In light of all of these things, I want to remind you of something. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him. And given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And not like should, like they should. I don't know if they will, but they should. No, literally it shall bow. I'm going to say this and I'm going to keep reading. You may not worship him today, but there is coming a day when you will worship him. You may not bow and acknowledge him as Lord today, but oh my friend, there's coming a day when you will bow and worship him. You may not see him as God today, but I'm telling you, my dear friend, one day you will. And the Bible says that, that in that day that every knee will bow the things of heaven, the things on earth, and the things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Again, notice, to the glory of God the Father. In light of this, wherefore, my beloved, as always, as you've always obeyed, not just in my presence only, but now in my absence, even much more in my absence, work out in light of this, in light of the cross, in light of the judgment of God, in light of standing before Him, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. We'll have to come back to that at a later time. Work it out. 
Why work it out? Because of the cross. Why work it out? Because of the judgment. Why work it out? Because of what he did. Why work it out? Because of who he is. When? I mean, we've defined this morning what does it mean. You're not working for, you're working it out. You've already been given it. Now get, take, take everything that you can inside of you and outside of you and get all you can out of the salvation that he's given to you. Work it out. What? Why? Because of the cross, because of the judgment, because of who he is, because of what he did. When? Not j just January 1st. A new year. I'm getting back in it. No. It defines when for us, I believe. In the tense that the word was written, the two words in the English, one word in the Greek, work out. Literally, it was written in a, in a tense that would say, it needs to begin now and needs to continue to the end. The present tense. Something that you do now that has effect in the future. Work out now. But he said, don't just work out in my presence. Because we've all done that. We know mom and daddy were coming home, so we, we got everything cleaned up and we act like we've been good the whole time. Because we, we wanted to be better in their presence or, or as students when the teacher walks out of the room. And you know, you're doing your work and as soon as that door closes, you, you take those 42 spitballs you've been making and you start throwing them around. Right, Riley? I mean, you just start throwing them around. Not just in my presence, but he said you even obey more even in my absence. What was he saying? He said now and all the time we should be working out our own salvation. Now and all the time we should be leaving the mind saying, I got everything there was to get out of that day. Every single day, now and forever until the end of time, we should be leaving that farmland saying, I got everything there was to get out of that word that day. That pair of shoes, I got everything there was to, to get. Now is the time. Don't wait till January 1st. Don't wait till your kids are grown and gone. Don't wait till revival. Don't wait till a conference or a camp. Start now. Start working out now. Sign up for the spiritual gold's gym, as it were, the spiritual planet fitness, as it were. Today, start now. Start working it out. The what, the why, the when. I don't believe anybody here would dispute any of those. The problem many times is the how. Isn't it? I mean, I, we, we've gone through it. We, we joined a, a, a fitness club years ago. We joined Courts Plus. And, you know, we were diligent for like two or three months. We did pretty good. And then before you know it, it's been two months since you've been. And now all you're doing is just giving them an offering. Right? How many have ever, done, how many have ever given an offering to a fitness place? Raise your hand. You know what I'm talking about. You sign up, you got good intentions. But when you go in, you know the people in there that know what they're doing. I mean, they've got all the gear. You know, they got the gym bag, they got the shoes, they, they just, they, they've got the workout strut, you know? And they go into this machine and they don't have to look on the side for the instructions. Or they don't have to sit back and watch somebody do it before they try. You know, they just go in there and they, they pump an iron and they get on the elliptical and they, man, they're working it on the treadmill or whatever. And they're going to this machine, that machine, and they're, they're just going to town. And they've got a, a schedule. Because then you see them, they, they, they kind of make their rounds and they go back and they got certain reps they want to do. Then they, then they burn out and they leave like, rah, and they, 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 know, they know what they're doing. Then you got other people like me. They go in there and you're like, how you doing? They're in there socializing. They're in there reading the instructions on the side. Okay, I do put that pen there. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You know, you can tell they don't know what they're doing. And so you know what they do? They get a personal trainer. They get somebody to, to, to help them. Okay, what, what do you want to accomplish? Well, I want, I want to accomplish this. I want to look like that. And hopefully they'll say, well, you'll never look like that. But let's, 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 let's scale it down a little ways. And they start teaching you how. Because the truth is, you know, physically, you know you probably need to work out. <laughs> Some of you are like, man. You know physically why you need to work out. 15 pounds at Thanksgiving. You know when. Yesterday. The problem with most, most of us physically is we just don't know how. 
Because there's only so much push-ups to do for you. Or sit-ups to do for you. Or running will do for you. There's a lot of things you can do physically. What about spiritually? I think every one of us know what we need to do. There's not a person in here, and I want you to hear me. I don't know everybody, but I can tell you this because I know human nature. There's not a person in here from Lynn Dabney all the way to Valerie Stevens and all the way around. There's not a person in this building that does not need to get more out of the land. Not one. There's not a person in here that would dispute the reasons why. Because of the cross. Because of the judgment. Because of what he did. Because of who he is. There's not one person in here that would dispute when. Yesterday. Now. But the problem is you're sitting there and you're thinking, Okay, I'm ready. How? <laughs> How do you work out your salvation? Now that I'm done with my introduction, I'll get to my sermon. Um, that wasn't a joke. <laughs> no, it, it was. I want to give you the points, and then I'm going to come back and preach to you next time we come back to Philippians together. How to work out your salvation. Notice number one, you find it in verse 13. The first step you have to take if you're going to work out your salvation is you have to surrender all. Now that may be hard to see in the verse, but let me explain the verse to you. Put verse 13 up there. For, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do you know where the desire to come to church and to read your Bible and to live obedient? in obedience to God's word. Do you know where that desire came from? God. Now, I know I just burst your bubble because you thought it came from you. No, it came from God. That verse just teaches the desire comes from God. And then do you know where you got the strength to live for God? God. And so if the desire comes from God and the strength comes from God, I'm going to have a better chance of working out my salvation and getting everything I can out of what God has given me if I just surrender myself to God. Because the desire and the strength come from Him anyway. So if you want to work out your salvation, this is what you have to do. First thing, I'm your personal trainer. <laughs> I know you thought I'd be more muscular. First of all, you've got to surrender all. Second, you've got to straighten up. What I do with my kids. I can be in my bedroom, I can snap, they could hear it in their bedroom upstairs. Hey! Start I turned into my daddy. Did y'all know that? Don't you make don't make me come up there. If I, my daddy said, look, if I gotta come back there, it ain't gonna be good for nobody. Straighten up. Look at verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. You remember in Corinthians when he gave them a big old long list of things that they better straighten up? He said, and you better straighten this up before I get there or else. Whew, I'm glad I live in this generation. I wouldn't have wanted to be them and had not been straightened up. You know what he was telling them? You want to work out your salvation? Straighten up. You're gossiping and backbiting? It's got to go. You're fighting and division? It's got to be gone. If you're going to get everything you can out of what God gave you, you've got to straighten up. Number three, you've got to live sincere. Put the next verse up there. Verse 15, sorry. That ye may be blameless and harmless as the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of the crooked and perverse uh, generation or nation among whom ye shine as lights to the world. You know what he's saying? You've got to be real. You've got to live in light of the salvation that God's given to you. You've got to be sincere. We'll talk about that next week. Last one. You've got to surrender all, straighten up, live with sincerity. Then you've got to saturate in, holding forth the word of life. You're never going to get all you can out of this Christian gift, this, this salvation gift that Jesus has given us if you don't get yourself in the word of God. So I'm your personal trainer for the next few weeks. 
And folks, that's how we work out. But here's the invitation today. Do you want to work out? Or better said, and I'm closing, do you want to get everything there is to get out of the salvation that God's given? Do you want to live it to its fullest? If you do, we got some decisions to make today. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. You're here today and you say, Pastor, I, I want to live this salvation to its fullest. I want to get everything there is to get. And I sure wish you'd pray for me. I want to work out. Today I, I resolve before God. This is, this is a New Year's resolution, but it's more important than that. But as a resolution in that sense, you'd say, Preacher, I want to be resolved to get everything there is to get from this salvation God's given me. I'm committed to that this year. Pray for me. If that's you, would you lift your hand this morning? I want to get everything there is to get. Just lift up and keep it up. God bless you all over this building. This is what I want you to do. If you lifted your hand as we stand to our feet with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, I want you to step out right now and come. Would you stand with me? Every head bowed, every eye closed as we stand, and these are coming. You join these. You get around this altar to say, Oh, Lord, I, I'm, I'm going to work out my own salvation. I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity to become spiritually fit. Bruce is going to sing one stanza. You come if you need to. All to Jesus I surrender All to Him I freely give I will never Don't just float. love and trust Him In His presence daily question very important question you're here and you say pastor if I were to die today I'm not sure that I'm ready to meet God if that's you I want to pray for you would you just lift up your hand and say pastor please pray for me I'm not sure that I'm saved I'm not sure that I'm ready to meet God be honest anybody I surrender all Oh, God, help us. Lord, help us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. God, these things that we'll talk about in the coming weeks, Lord, I pray that we will be resolved to living those out. What could you do through a church where this many folks would get all there is to get out of the land. God, we just pray your blessing on it. Thank you for speaking to our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' precious name. All God's people said, Amen. Well, last week I challenged you to step it up. This week, I'm challenging you to work it out, right? And I thought about bringing some um, props like I did last week, some dumbbells and stuff, but I was afraid I'd hurt something. So we just, uh, we, yeah, probably smart. But, man, we're thrilled uh, that you're here. Miss Billy, join me on the stage if you would. Uh, many of you have, uh, have already met, and if you have not, you need to meet Miss Billy Sanchez. I've known Miss Billy for, for a long time.
And uh, man, me and Christy were both thrilled last year when she stepped through those doors back there and uh, started coming to church with us, uh, got her heart right with the Lord, um, went through my Church 242 class and has already gotten involved and got just a wonderful spirit and has come today to join our church. And I wonder if we have a, a motion from the body to accept her. Got a motion, a second, got a second. All in favor, say amen. amen. All opposed, see Luke Waddell today, all right? He'll, 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 uh, he'll handle you, okay? Miss Billy, would you go to the back and I'll meet you back there? Okay, God bless you. And uh, make sure that you get by and hug her neck and uh, let her know how, how glad you are that she's at New Life. And uh, again, if you're looking for a good church, listen, God's so good to us. And uh, we're, we're excited about what God's doing here. So you, um, you come back and visit with us and... And uh, we're just uh, thrilled at what, um, what God's going to do in 2016. A couple of announcements. Tonight we have a communion service. And so we'll be having our regular uh, worship service. And to, at the end of that we'll be uh, uh, having communion, breaking uh, bread, and, and uh, just in remembrance of the sacrifice that Jesus made. It's always a very special service. So you come back for that this evening. Um, of course, don't forget about our theme, Step It Up. We've got cottage prayer meetings this week on the 15th and 16th. At the Hill and the Houghton's house, you can see uh, all of that information in the bulletin. There's a sweet thank you from the Bragans, and it's really good to have Rebecca in service with us today. Rebecca, we love you. Been praying for you, and uh, glad to have her uh, today. And then, um, and then Saturday, January the 30th, it is going to be at six o'clock. Um, it's not 6:30 as the bulletin says, but six o'clock. We're doing a uh, church-wide movie night, and uh, the kids will be watching Inside Out, which goes along with their theme for the month of January.